Welcome back. Michelle Schwader, dietitian at UW Health, is taking your questions at 270-9933. Michelle, you there? Yes, I'm here. How are you doing, Mark? Pretty good. How are you? Staying healthy, I'm I hope. Fine. Yes, I am. It's a, kind of difficult to cook this time. You know, if that's running, you're not supposed to run to the grocery store a lot. Is there stuff in your pantry that you can use to eat healthy? Well, we are trying to get people to focus a little bit more on the non-perishable items, but a lot of times people automatically will go for things like pasta and chips and some of the snack foods. So we do want to kind of steer them towards more of the protein-containing foods. Um, obviously, your frozen meat would work, but even if it's canned fish or salmon, obviously frozen vegetables when you can't find fresh. And I think that the main goal is to still try to have some semblance of a pattern in your day, especially when it comes to eating. Um, but also when you're making that grocery list, we know that we have to be flexible. We want to try to make a plan to, to have all of our healthy foods, knowing that we're going to probably fit in a treat or two in there. But in order to help your immune system, we want to be able to focus on the healthy foods. And that might mean being flexible if there's something that you can't find at the store. Like frozen, frozen meat and things like that. Right. Because it's tough to buy fresh for two weeks or three weeks. Right, and there are some things that last longer, you know, things like cabbage, things like apples um, will last quite a few days in your refrigerator, but if you're going to buy berries, you're going to want to eat those first. Um, then at the end of the, the trip, um, you can plan to buy some frozen vegetables that will last those last few days until you get to the store again. All right, let's go to the phones. We'll start with Elaine from Madison. Hi, Elaine, what's your question? I was wondering about the beets, beet powder that's been advertised lately and wondered if it was really a good thing and how much fresh beets would you have to eat? Right, so they're doing a lot of research on beets as far as um, oxygen in your blood and heart health. And the challenge with that is that they've really been only testing that with athletes, pretty high-end uh, athletes. So the benefit that it might give us more average people is still a big question. and. Um, you are correct that it would take quite a lot of beets um, that you're eating to make up the beet powder. Um, there's no real known number. Every company kind of makes theirs differently, but um, the beets are still a very healthy item. It's probably not going to give you the medicinal properties that the beet powder is advertising, and even then, it probably will only help you if you're more of an elite athlete. All right. Thanks, Elaine. Are there Thank you. Are there certain foods that help boost your immune system in, in these times? Right, well, there are, and at risk of sounding like a dietitian, I do have to say that it kind of comes back to the fruits and vegetables, the proteins. Um, a lot of those leafy green vegetables especially are gonna have things like the folic acid, and um, your protein items are gonna have things like zinc, um, magnesium, selenium, all of those things that are wrapped up in our immune system, which is a very complex system. Um, leads us to believe that we need to have a good variety of foods to provide all of those things. Taking just one maybe big supplement of zinc, for example, doesn't really do a lot of good if you don't have all of the partners that the zinc needs to work. Right. Um, so it does really come back to the fruits and the vegetables and the healthy proteins. All right. Well, eat healthy and stay safe. We're out of time. Thanks for calling in, everybody. Michelle, thank you for your time. We'll see you next month. Thank you.